Now, this is the home of independent, fearless, and credible journalism. Welcome to Join News Prime with me, Samuel Kojo Brace. Coming up tonight, resident of Asheye in the Adenta municipality in the Greater Accra region are up in arms over the pollution of the only water body in the neighborhood, the Fulani Lake. Why is it that recently this water is always be it's just because the rain fall two days ago mm. and then it pushes the black. You could have seen how the water is. We are struggling with Galamse and a lot of things are happening. Do you understand? We are not supposed to be leaving. The Galamse is spoiling the water everywhere. Mm -hmm. If I have my word, I will tell the president to shoot at sight. Now people are likely to die if government continues to refuse to release funds to the National Health Insurance Scheme. And minorities warning healthcare centers are forcing patients to bear the full cost of treatment. ...to increase mobility in persons with hypertension, diabetes, sickle cell anemia, HIV, and other conditions who require regular intake of medical consumables and services resulting in undue stress on already overburdened medical facilities. We have details as they allege a deliberate attempt to collapse the National Health Insurance Scheme and they lament the lack of release of funds. Unfortunately, there rather seems to be an unwavering effort to collapse the National Health Insurance Scheme by depriving it of funds. More as Health Minister admit delays in paying claims of health service providers is leading to demand from the providers for patients to pay the full cost. The practice has led to member dissatisfaction of the scheme and the common language being the NHIS is not working. In addressing the issue stated above, Mr. Speaker, the NHIA is collaborating with the Ministry of Finance to ensure regular reinvestment. Also in this bulletin, pressure is spiling on the Agric Ministry to sell other cheaper food to the public after it began its open market initiative. But I followed what was happening in the PFJ market at the ministry. And the woman complained that the prices are the same. They said the value is the same. They don't see any significant difference in the price, prices of food in the market and that of the PFJ market. Now, starting January 1, 2023, the national daily minimum wage will now be 14 cities, 88 pesos from the previous 13 cities, 53 pesos. The National Tripartite Committee concluded negotiations on the determination of the 2023 national daily minimum wage at a meeting held on Wednesday, 16th November 2022 in Accra. The committee, in determining the 2023 national daily minimum wage, took into account the current economic challenges, cost of living, sustainability of businesses and desirability of attaining a higher level of employment as well as the need for rapid restoration of macroeconomic stability. Now, according to the statement released a while ago, um, they cite a lot, uh, several reasons as to why that should be the case. We'll bring you the statement shortly for you to know uh, the details as uh, they're in, in that particular statement. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I, Isaac Kofi Ejay, who is uh, a research analyst with our research desk here, a data analyst with our research desk here, join us, is with me in studio to give us a breakdown of what it is. Kofi, uh, in, in CD terms, what does the 10% upward adjustment mean? Well, so it simply means we are moving from a minimum wage of, you know, 13 cities, some 53 pesos to now 14 cities, 80 pesos. It means in CD terms, we are adding one CD, uh, 53 pesos, to the previous minimum wage that we had. But the interesting thing is that, Brace, if you convert this minimum wage that we're talking about to dollars, uh, you realize that the situation is dire if you compare mm. to dollars. So if you convert uh, 14 CDs, uh, 88 pesos, if I'm being diplomatic and using the Bank of Ghana, you know, exchange rate of um, $1 to 13 CDs, then it means that uh, your minimum wage will be somewhere one dollar 
and then you know thirteen um, one dollar and thirteen cents. But if you look at um, the world poverty line, um, it means that if you really want to calculate the number of people who are poor, they shouldn't earn their minimum wage should not fall below two CDs at two dollars and fifteen cents. But if you look at our minimum wage, uh, just because of the current exchange rate situation we are having, it simply means that minimum wage uh, will currently be you know somewhere a little above you know one dollar, one dollar and thirteen cents. It means a lot of Ghanaians will be below the poverty line of you know two dollars and fifteen cents. Mm. Now. Um in terms of trend, mm. uh, how is the analysis looking like in terms of the daily minimum wage increment? Well, if you look at the data, actually, you can see that we've been adding some percentages to our minimum wage. And this time around, we, workers are aren't going to enjoy just minimum wage, but they will also enjoy COLA of 15%. So the COLA that was implemented at the beginning of the year will be extended next year. So it means you have your minimum wage increase and then you also enjoy a 15%, you know, um, cola. But Brace, if you look at the trend, um, I think the last time that minimum wage went up uh, by some 10% was 2019, where minimum wage went up by 10.88%. Um, it's been declining. The next time that the, the previous, the, the next time that it was actually increased was somewhere around 7.9, then to 5 point something. But now we are seeing the 10% increment coming back again. Uh, but there are concerns that if you look at producer price index, it's now around 65.2%. So whilst you are considering consumers or whilst you are con considering workers, you should be considering producers because their cost of production has actually now increased. So it means cost of production, one element of it is wages. It mm. means if your wages increase, cost of production is actually going to increase. So how are you know, producers going to accept this new minimum wage and how little is this for consumers as well? Mm. All right. Okay. I'm grateful to you. Uh, but let's share with you the full statement as was released a while ago and get you the details. It says the committee concluded as follows that one, an increase in the national daily minimum wage by 10% over the 2022 uh, national daily minimum wage, which translates into um, 14 cities, 88 pesos, and two, a cost of living allowance of 15% over the 2023 national daily minimum wage. The effective date for the implementation of the 2023 national daily minimum wage shall be 1st January 2023. Now, all establishment, institutions, organizations whose daily minimum wages are below the new rate should adjust accordingly effective 1st January 2023. All establishment or any establishment, institution or organization that flout the 2023 national daily minimum wage shall be sanctioned in accordance with the law. Now, the National Tripartite Committee recommends that the 2023 national daily minimum wage should be tax exempt. Well, so that says the statement there. But um, we've been joined on the phone by the Deputy Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Bright Reco Brope. Thank you so much, sir, for agreeing to join us now. Uh, but how did the committee arrive at this conclusion, taking into consideration the cost of living now, fuel prices and all of that? Well, good evening to you and good evening to cherished viewers on, on your network. Uh, this is something that is done by the Trapartite. And as you clearly indicated, it's a committee made up of employers, uh, made up of labor, organized labor and government. So we went into conclave and had, you know, back-to-back -back discussions, especially this year being a very hard year, as you all know. Uh, it, it, it was difficult taking it, but in the end, we had a truth in the spirit of tripartism. So what happened uh, is a result of very healthy engagement between the three parties, and at the end of the day, we decided on what we came up with. This year particularly, as you can see, is different from all others that I have at least witnessed since I came to the ministry. This year is the only year that we, we, we anticipate some level of, uh, you know, the, the hardships that we are going through. We anticipate that, well, if this is not ending any time soon in the next one or two, three months, then uh, we are saying that as a committee, we recommend and we concluded on it that a COLA of 
be added to what we increased from this year's uh, 2022 minimum wage uh, at a cola of 15% to that for the very barest minimum wage earners. Mm. And, and I guess this cuts across. Uh, what's the plan to ensure the enforcement of this national daily minimum wage? I'm asking this because we are aware of some employers not following exactly what the, the, the National Tripartite Committee puts out there. Well, the, the beautiful thing with this uh, is that you could see on the table that uh, these three parties coming together, uh, the fourth and back was not for nothing. At the end of the day, the result is so much owned by the three parties. And they really considered lots of things, i.e. cost of production and labor also considered uh, the fact that this, I mean, things are generally tough, uh, the, the uh, transport fares and all that. And therefore, uh, coming to a consensus means that there was no imposition on any one party. And we are sure that this will be respected. All right. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that you could join us with uh, these explanations. That's Deputy Minister for Labor and Employment Relations, Bright Record Brobe. Now moving on to other stories. As part of the government's commitment to ensuring that cashew farmers are not exploited by buyers, government instituted a tree crop development authority to get a benchmark price for the cashew. Last cashew season, a kilo of cashew was at a minimum of five cities across the country. The Tree Crop Development Authority is yet to engage the government to determine a new benchmark price for cashew this season. However, before any announcement is made on the cashew price for the coming season, some farmers in the German South municipality of the Bono region are calling on both the government and the Tree Crop Development Authority to peg the bench price of the cashew at 11 cities to cushion them against the hardship. Emmanuel Kusi is secretary to the cashew farmers, and he says this figure is not a request for price increment, but the current dollar equivalent to the previous benchmark. According to him, farmers are the worst off after their farming season due to the astronomical increment of goods and services in the country. Isaac Kovij, a data analyst here at Join News, joins me in studio with some data on cashew in Ghana. Kofi, what do we know so far about the cashew value chain? Mm. The cashew farmers want government to peg the price at 11 CD per kilo. But we've been tracking, um, you know, the value of this cashew market that we see across the globe and also in Africa and in Ghana as well. But if you look at this in 2021, uh, you know, there are some places in the world that you can actually see that they demand a lot of cashew. And number one was in India where, you know, demand went up by 10%. In US, it went up by 9.5%, and in China, it went up by, you know, some 7.5%. Mm. But if you look at this graph, it tells you the story of Africa, where we are currently in terms of cashew and then revenue or the, the production of cashew, uh, the growth of cashew in Africa. So if you look at the top, you know, four cashew exporters in Africa as of 2020, number one is Ivory Coast. They were able to export you know, um, some units of 574.6. Uh, Ghana is number two, 302, followed by Tanzania, 241. And then there is also Nigeria with 190. This statistic is actually from Statista. And, but and, and look, I guess these are in thousands. Absolutely. Okay. So if you look at the cash revenue we've been able to rake in as a country from cash rise from 2010 to 2021. Now, this is important because we've been talking about foreign exchange. It means every dollar we earn as a country now is very, very important. So if you have any commodity, if you have anything bringing you dollars, you have to really cherish it. So if you look at cashew, for instance, since 2010, cashew revenue from cashew is around $3.2 billion that we've been able to raise from this. But look at the trend um, from cashew, how much we've been getting as revenue. You could see that in 2016 was a year we had the highest where we were able to get some 981.4 you know, um, um, million dollars from cashew you know, exports. But since then, it's been declining. In 2010, actually, when you know, China, India were all demanding a lot of cashew, they were actually falling on Ghana to, to have, this, um, to have the, you know, this demand that they were seeing. But if you look at it, it's been falling right from 2016. But So we asked the question, what is actually happening here that we aren't getting so much from cashew as we did in 2016?
All right, grateful to you for that word. Then uh, Emmanuel Kusi joins us on, on uh, uh, you know, on this benchmark values, and he is uh, the general secretary for the association. Now, Iman, I'm grateful that you could join us. He's joining us via phone now. Uh, can you run yeah. us through how much it costs now to cultivate an acre of cashew farm, depending on which you're asking for incrementing the price of your produce? Hello? Uh, Hello? Can, 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 you, can you follow me? Can, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you now. Great. Uh, first yeah. of all, my colleague was uh, showing us a data that indicates that from 2016, our revenue in cashew has been falling, which means that farmers are not growing that much. What is accounting for this? Uh, in fact, uh, all the farming inputs that all the farming inputs that we need to do an acre of a cashew farm have rise up because when you calculate the cost of a one acre now <laughs> in fact if you don't have money you cannot do a uh, one acre even a year because uh, farming inputs like agrochemicals uh, that is weedy size uh, labor cost everything has uh, increased Okay. Uh, have been increased so, mm -hmm. overwhelmingly. Okay. So if you are a farmer, if you are going into cashew business or cashew farming, it, it, and you don't have uh, financial models, it will be very difficult for you to enter into cashew farming. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's about the finances. But so far, have you communicated your intention to the Tree Club Development Authority? What have they also been telling you? Yes, we have been. Uh, they will, uh, we have been discussed with them. Last year, uh, the Tree Crop Authority came out with a benchmark available for farmers just to cushion the farmers to enable them to do their farming very well. But notwithstanding that, uh, our part, our part was also to fulfill that we should produce quality seeds we were able to uh, abide by what the Tree Crop Authority came out with. Because what uh, they, came, they, they, they were saying is that sometimes we have to dry it well to a minimum. The moisture content should be up around 10%. And fortunately for us, we as farmers or the union, mm -hmm. we educated our farmers very well for them to uh, draw it to that level. Mm. So now, our path has been fulfilled. Left it the government and the foreign buyers uh, be with us to, to, to buy the product with a good price so that we may have the courage to do the farming very well. Now, in terms of the development of the value chain, what do you think government can do to help? Last year, uh, government came out with five cities, a benchmark. Uh, that five cities uh, was not enough, but it helped us. Uh, but right now, we could see that that five cities government came out with was equivalent to 80 cents in U.S. dollars. Right now, when we are with the same 80, uh, 80 cents, you can get around 11 cities plus. So uh, we are requesting that today the benchmark of uh, this year, mm. the new benchmark price that our government will come out with should be not less than 11 cities. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, grateful to you for joining us here. Now, still staying with the agri sector. Pressure is piling on the Agric Ministry to sell other cheaper food to the public after it began its open market initiative. Some Ghanaians welcomed the, new, the move to sell food items directly to citizens, following concerns about soaring food prices in major markets. The ministry cuts food from the rural areas and transport them to Accra to sell at lower prices. A truckload of plantain selling at an average of 10 cities finished within four hours at the Makola market earlier today. 
also queues formed at the ministry where truck loads of rice was open for sale. My colleague Mamiesi Thompson was there for us. At Makola, just opposite or right by the um, the Makola fire station, and that was where, or that particular spot, was where the Ministry of Agri brought in a truck of plantains to sell earlier this morning to the public here. I am told that as early as 4 a.m. there was a truck full of plantain here, but it started selling at about 8 a.m. Before midday, the whole truck of plantains had finished. There were so many people here rushing for the plantains because a bunch of plantains was selling for 10 CDs, as low as 10 CDs. And I mean, that amount of, 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 of or that price for a bunch of plantain, you can't get anywhere in the market. In fact, I spoke to a couple of plantain sellers who were telling me that they sell the bunch for 40 CDs, but then they have to distribute it into smaller portions for 10 CDs, sometimes 5 CDs for those who cannot afford the bunch. 2 DNA. Now what do you say? 10 CDs. But your 10 CDs. Ah. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to Hey. Saturday, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Say tensity Saturday, say tensity, and then move a can with tensity. And I'm a toy. Hey, when we go, I bet break into the matter with tensity. And then I'm a pattern man. I'll buy. Oh, maybe do I bear seven thirty. Maybe I'm not can you see what that no more year go. No, I'm see a boy eater. No, I'm best at it. Ha, it's your boy eater. I'm not most at it. Crowd, <laughs> I'm here at the Ministry of Agri, and as you already know, there's a market here where we are selling. They are selling food produce because the prices on the market are high. Now, coming here this afternoon, we realized that the 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 produce here is local rice, the broken local rice, which is packaged in bags, and I can see right in this truck, um, a, a truck of local rice here at the Ministry of Agriculture. I mean, let me talk to this gentleman here who just bought um, a, a bag of rice. So please tell me, what's your name and, and what time did you get I'm, I'm here? I'm Godfrey. I got, yes. I uh, got here, I mean, I took my break time to come here and see if it was true that they were really selling here. So when I got here, I saw that they are selling the rice, which is a uh, local rice. Yes, so I bought one bag, but I, want, I wanted a mix of it. So I took one of the long green and four of the broken rice. Okay, now I'm going to eat the bag. I'm going to eat the bag. Tamastation. Tamastation. Would you be eating the bag? I'm going to eat the bag. 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 I'm going to now joining us on Zoom is the CEO of the Chamber of Agribusiness, Anthony Morrison, on this initiative. Now, Anthony, thank you for joining us. What do you make of uh, this initiative by government in the first place? Anthony, if, if you can hear me, kindly unmute so we can uh, hear what you're All telling right. us. Great. Okay. Yeah, so what do you make of this initiative in the first, in the first place? Uh, thank you very much, and uh, you're just doing. Um, I think that uh, uh, I want to believe that this is a need check approach as the uh, government seeks to uh, mitigate the cost of rising food costs on the market. Uh, last time we had opportunity to question what is the Anthony. 
Um, well, Anthony, if, if, if you're still there, now it's this has... also very important. Mm. Well, uh, we're trying to, you know, um, uh, we're speaking to Anthony Morrison. He is the CEO of the Ag Chamber of Agribusiness. We want to analyze this move by the Agri Ministry. Now, we know that the, the minority in Parliament are describing this as a misguided diagnosis of the challenges in the agri sector, especially when it comes to the rising cost of food produce. Um, what does the Chamber make of this? And how sustainable will this be? How do we then ensure that we get a sustainable solution to the challenges in terms of uh, uh, rising food prices? Anthony, uh, thanks for joining us again. So uh, conclude on what you do make of, of this particular initiative. Yes, so as I was saying, um, we need to first of all contextualize this in a proper way. What are the forces of the, uh, the Ghana's uh, agri-food market dynamics, okay? Uh, what the government is doing, or the Ministry of Food and Agriculture is doing now, is to allow uh, farmers to directly sell uh, to the market. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of jumping over the other forces, which are the aggregators and the market winners. Yes, in times of food crisis, this could be a good initiative, but how sustainable could this be? Uh, on the other hand, uh, is this a mandate of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, we believe strongly at the Chamber that um, it is the buffer stock that should be doing this. Even uh, at most, we know we do have the Human Security Department at the National Security, where they can actually uh, set up strategic zones in uh, various markets dotted across the country. So people could be selling these food stuff without all the bohaha. You know, it's an eyesore. Look at what is going on. It, it seems as though Ghana is in a, a, in a major food crisis, which, of course, is, we want to believe it as it is, because if you look at the main tenants of uh, food security, we're talking about accessibility, utilization, and also uh, availability. So um, if you have such a scenario, you should have some very strategic way of deploying this uh, uh, kind of um, uh, solution. But let me also say that um, the private sector could have, as well, be more involved uh, into planning a better uh, mitigative strategy than what we are seeing now. Okay. Mm. Uh, so going forward, if we want to tackle uh, the rising cost of uh, uh, food produce, what should be the way for government to do it and for that to be a sustainable way of dealing with this? Well, first of all, we need to look at our food balance sheet as a country. Currently, our food ba balance sheet, including imports, is 2%. And uh, going into next year, since from the minor season to major season, we are looking at the fact that we're going to have a negative 1% uh, thereof because there's going to be low productivity as a result of climate change. What we should be looking at strategically is government should set up or should help commercial farmers. For instance, commercial farmers that will produce purposely for the buffer stock. As it stands now, buffer stock doesn't have even food. And this is what you would have expected buffer stock to be doing. But because buffer stock does not have food, so we need each region to have a commercial uh, farm that produces purposely for buffer stock. Mm -hmm. Government should also mitigate uh, plowing, plowing services and harvesting services for farmers. For instance, you provide a premise work for fisher folk, okay, to, uh, to supplement the protein content of feeding across the country. However, we do not see the impact of all these uh, uh, support systems. Can we also provide the same to those green crops, especially maize, rice, uh, millet, sodium, and thereof, okay? When we can do all this, mm -hmm. we expect to see the prices of food. Because, for instance, last production year, okay. we did a plowing at 150, 170 Ghana cities. Okay. As it stands now, we are doing there are 350 and 400. So the cost of production is going up. Okay. The cost of doing an acre of a hectare of maize was 1,700 last production. Now it's almost 6,000. All right. The cost so, of so, so uh, government, of government, have also gone up. So government so, should, should should come in with subs subsidies 
to help exactly. us. Okay, exactly. I'm grateful. That's the only way forward now. I'm, go I'm grateful, Anthony Morrison, for joining us. He is the CEO of the Chamber of Agri Business. Now, the minority in Parliament are tearing into government's PFJ market introduced by the Agri Ministry. The ministry cuts food from rural areas, transport them to Accra to sell at cheaper prices. But speaking to join us, minority spokesperson for food and agriculture, Eric Opoku, claimed that government has mixed diagnosed the cause of rising food prices, warning this intervention will not achieve the desired results. Now, the rising food prices is not, is not attributed to shortage in the market. It is attributable to rising cost of production. But I followed what was happening in the PFJ market at the ministry. And the woman complained that the prices are the same. They said the value is the same. They don't see any significant difference in the price, prices of food in the market and that of the PFJ market. So it means that the minister got it wrong. If the price had come down, they would have admitted, that, yes, the price has, has come down because of the market. Now they are saying that the value is the same. And some, I had one woman even saying that what she bought from the market was even cheaper than what is buying at the uh, PFJ market. So that is the difference. Now the minority are asking the president to dismiss the minister for a great Dr. Osu Efriye Akoto, who the president has described as one of the excellent performing ministers. Those of us who understand the sector and have been monitoring the activities of the minister and the implementation of the policies that the chorus across the country, you see clearly that the minister has not performed. In fact, I have always challenged the figures they churn out in respect of their produce. When they say, we have produced this quantity of maize, this quantity of rice, I do challenge some of these things. Actually, I, I think that the Greek minister has not performed at all. In fact, he engages in agricultural propaganda instead of working on the field to deliver the results. Because if at the time you assume office, our food import bill was around 1.2 billion. And today we are doing 2.4 billion. And you, you claim that you have done so much, you have produced enough food. Then I don't know where you are coming from. Do you know that the poultry sector is uh, almost collapsed? This is still the Joy News Prime. Still to come in the bulletin, resident of Ashiyeye in the Adenta municipality in the Greater Accra region are up in arms over the pollution of the only water body in the neighborhood, the Fulani Lake. Why is it that recently this water is always be It's just because the rain fall two days ago mm. and then it pushes the black. You could have seen how the water is. We are struggling with Galamse and a lot of things are happening. Do you understand? We are not supposed to be living. The Galamse is spoiling the water everywhere. Mm -hmm. If I have my will, I will tell the president to shoot at sight. Welcome back from the break. Now, resident of Ashiye in the Adenta municipality of the Greater Accra region, are up in arms over the pollution of the only water body in the neighborhood, the Fulani Lake. The lake has been a source of portable water for residents and served as a source of livelihood for water suppliers operating in the enclave. In recent weeks, however, the lake, according to the resident, has turned black, threatening aquatic life. Latifi Dries has visited the community and has the rest of the story. The Fulani Lake, which is just behind me in your shorts, has served the people of Ashiye and neighboring communities for decades now. It has also served as home to aquatic life that found safe haven in this lake. But today the situation has changed and the people of Ashiye are up in arms due to the heavy pollution the water has suffered over a couple of months now. Residents say the water in the lake turned black all of a sudden and suspected potential pollution. But after many weeks, the source of the problem is yet to be established. Abena Odelia is a trader. 
She sells a few meters away from the Fulani Lake in the Adenta municipality. She is one of the people affected by the situation as she explains how a company operating in the area advised her to relocate the well to avoid pollution. <laughs> My well changed color and became dark, same color as the lake. The company later advised me to sink a new well at a different location, but I declined because I couldn't afford. A lot of people are sick and all that. If they get their money, do they give it to them? They should remove the factory and take it away to wherever they are going to take it. Patrick Awinterim is a commercial bus driver and has lived in this community for about a year. Wait, wait. This is not the way. First, people drink this water here. Formerly, people were drinking the water. That was what they told me. Why is it that recently this water is always... Be ch it's just because the rainfall two days ago mm. and then it pushes the black. You could have seen how the water is. We are struggling with Galamse. And a lot of things are happening. Do you understand? We are not supposed to be living. The Galamse is spoiling the water everywhere. Mm -hmm. If I have my will, I will tell the president to shoot at sight from the air, ground, side and side, everywhere. Kill. Straight forward. So Emmanuel Kwe is a chief water supplier in the Ashiye enclave. Um, he's been supplying water to households in the neighborhood for decades now. But today he has a different story to share with us. Tell us about what you know about the Fulani Lake and what it has become today. It's a foot road. You mean you were drinking from the Fulani Lake? I was drinking from the Fulani Lake. I was drinking so you brought in your tractor and you were supplying water in the neighborhood from the Fulani Lake? Yeah, from the Fulani Lake. Well, neighbor and I can be a new company never be a new one. I can't believe no cooker woman. They can do it by feeding. It won't hear what you don't. What has become of your business now? What has supplied you? It's a business. It's a business. It's a business. It's a business. Okay. So you don't rely on the Fulani Lake as your uh -huh. primary source of water? Kofi mm. Jan is a teacher at the Green Liner International School, also in Ashiye. He is concerned about how the pollution is leading to the extinction of aquatic life in the lake. People around were also using it for domestic purposes. But in a few uh, years, uh, let me say, some few months ago, we heard that there's a company here. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a company that has come around. And when, after their lunch, the lunch of the company, we saw that the water has changed color. And one time when we were passing, we saw that all the aquatic animals, especially the fish, have started dying. The mad fish, especially. And it was giving a bad sense. The people blame this pollution on the operations of a company Sorry? that started operating in the area recently. However, investigations by the Water Resource Commission exonerated the said company of any wrongdoing. Findings of a separate investigation by the Environmental Protection Agency are yet to be made public. Now, a stark warning from the minority in parliament who say more people would die if government does not immediately release funds to the National Health Insurance Authority. They say patients are being forced to bear the full cost of accessing health care due to the non-release of funds to the NHIA who owe service providers. You would recall a recent news conference by the Pharmaceutical Society warning to pass full cost to patients. Speaking to journalists, ranking member on the health committee, Kwabana Minta Kando asked the government to pay up to the NHIA to avert unnecessary death and pain. Parliamentary Affairs correspondent Kweku Asante has the rest of the story. In these times of economic hardship, many are turning to the National Health Insurance Scheme to take care of their health care costs. 
But with the NHI owing service providers and health facilities asking patients to bear the full cost, the minority say deaths may be inevitable. Under the current economic conditions, more Ghanaians than ever before will require the National Health Insurance Scheme to finance their medical needs. It is therefore unconscionable for government to hold on to monies collected in the name of the National Health Insurance Authority, rendering it incapable of meeting its obligation to service providers. This is going to increase mobility and mortality across Ghana. As we speak, patients in some hospitals across the country are being asked to make upfront payment for medical consumables and services. This is likely to increase mobility in persons with hypertension, diabetes, sickle cell anemia, HIV, and other conditions will require regular intake of medical consumables and services resulting in undue stress on already overburdened medical facilities. According to Kwabina Minta Kando, there seemed to be a deliberate attempt on the part of government to collapse the National Health Insurance Scheme. Unfortunately, there rather seems to be an unwavering effort to collapse the National Health Insurance Scheme by depriving it of funds. As we speak, the highest release of National Health Insurance levies collected was in 2016, when 86 of the collections were released to the National Health Insurance Authority. The lowest on record is that of last year, where government out of the 2.056 billion it collected paid only 127 million or 6.2% to the National Health Insurance Fund. Meanwhile, Health Minister Kwekua Jimanmenu admitted delay in the payment of claims, which is forcing service providers to pass on the cost to patients. He, however, assured Parliament that the NHIA is working to improve on its claim payment systems. Co-payments or top-ups are not part of the payments at the moment. However, it persists, and in the following, and the following have been given as some of the reasons for its occurrence. Delays in claims payment, perception of unrealistic tariffs, and irregular review of tariffs, medicines, and services. The practice has led to member dissatisfaction of the scheme, and the common language being the NHIS is not working. In addressing the issue stated above, Mr. Speaker, the NHIA is collaborating with the Ministry of Finance to ensure regular reinvestment to service providers. There will be regular reviews of the tariffs in response to economic conditions. Only a few days ago, the Pharmaceutical Society threatened that exactly this was going to happen. It appears the providers have started demanding co-pays directly from patients. It is yet to be seen what the experience of the ordinary patient will be in the various health facilities. But just as you heard the minority say there, this is going to lead to unnecessary debts. And I've been calling on the finance ministry to release payments for the National Health Insurance Authority to be able to pay the service providers. Reporting for Joy News, Kweku Asante from Parliament House, Accra. And in the studio here at Kokumlele, we'll take a quick break to bring you showbiz. All right, so welcome back. Let's do showbiz now. And mm. Noella Karyen Yankee, Yale, yeah? <laughs> yeah, Yale. 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 Yeah. Is here. Sometimes I, I, I wish I could speak Nzima with you. Oh, um, I, I, I mean, I'll be terrible at it. Oh. Yeah, I can read Nzima. Mm. That's an interesting bit. I can read Nzima. I can actually understand um, to an extent, but mm. I can't really speak. Kodye. Okay. Good. What's, what's up? <laughs> right. So the Grammy um, Recording Academy yesterday, they released uh, nominations mm. for the year 2023, 2022 actually. Mm -hmm. But of course, it will be happening on uh, 5th February 2023, the main event. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kwejo, you should be excited because Ghana got a nomination in okay. the person of Rocky Dawuni uh... and Guilty Beats. I'm particularly excited about Guilty Beats nomination. Mm. I think he okay. He's a. Uh, I mean, he's I'm done I've only, I've only read about um, Rocky. Rocky, I of right? Guilty. Oh, Guilty Beats is like a Ghanaian uh, beat maker. That's him. Mm. Um, and he got a nomination for his work in Beyonce's Renaissance. I oh, think okay. yeah, Renaissance album. Mm. 
So yeah, congratulations to the Ghanaians. But mm. of course, Africa also got nominated in the mm. person of Burner Boy, Thames, mm. and definitely we are rooting for them mm. to win. Congrats um, to as well. Rocky Dawoodi. That's right. I mean, he's been around for a long time. Uh huh. He's a great guy. That's right. So congrats to him, go to be Thames and. Burner. Yeah, but let's also say a big congratulations to Jackie, singer Jackie, because okay. she has also been inducted into the YouTube Black Voices class of 2023. Okay. Now, basically, it's just a, an, an association mm. uh, where they put the spotlight on black content creators mm. and musicians. And basically, they'll give you resources that would help your content or music mm. thrive. Mm. And she's been inducted, like I said, into the class of 2023. Uh, let's see how oh, they yes. went. I mean, Definitely yeah. is I, a masterclass. I, I love this. Yeah, I love it too. Tell me. I love it. God should have given me a, a voice to sing. Yeah? You, I could have... you think you could have made it to the class? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could uh, have. Uh, well, I believe you. I mean, I'm being... Yes, I, um, if I sing now, it's terrible. Stuff. I know, I know. You do? <laughs> I know, but oh. I believe it can change. I mean, it's Kojo we're talking about. So. Yeah. Yeah. I should go for voice training. <laughs> you should. Anyway, let's talk about Kwame Eugene. I'm sure you have mm. heard his newest single called Single. Is it single? Yeah, it's this called morning, Single. This morning, MFR was playing some beautiful high life song from him. Oh, okay. Probably. Uh, well, this is a little bit.